This is how you reach max bounty in a matter of minutes. And this is how you can awaken a fruit by completing the raid with the Buddha fruit. These are some of the craziest blocks with tricks that pros abuse that you don't. Okay, so the very first trick that I have on this list is something that I mentioned before a butt ton of times in my videos, but it's a really good trick, so I'm gonna tell you guys about it one more time. And this is how you get 50 levels in a matter of seconds. Everyone knows that when you spawn into the first sea, you're supposed to start grinding mobs at the very first island. That will be the Pirate Starter Island or the Marine Starter Island, depending on what you chose. But I'm telling you guys that this is the wrong way to play the game. The first thing that you wanna do once you enter the game is head over to the Fountain City, the final island located in in the first seat. And to be at this island, you're actually supposed to be like level 700 and something. But trust me, head over to this island. Then you're gonna find this NPC. You basically, what you're gonna do is lure him behind this wall. And this is the most important part of this trick because if you don't do that, then the NPC will instantly just kill you. Once you've done that, you're actually gonna glitch the NPC. And since blocks with players and mobs can't do damage to each other through walls, you're gonna be completely good. Even though the NPC tries to hit you, it won't do any damage. It's gonna take a while, but once you kill him, you'll get a butt ton of levels all at the same time. So if you're very new to the game, I recommend doing this trick, but don't do it more than like two or three times, then it gets kind of useless. But if you have any friends that are just starting the game, make sure you recommend this trick to them. It's very useful. Okay, since a lot of you watching this video are actually new to blocks with and don't know how the teams work, I'm gonna be telling you guys about Marines and Pirates. You can earn bounty or honor. Honor depending on which team you are. If you're a pirate, then you earn bounty, and if you're a marine, you earn honor. Once you become a pirate, the leaderboard will show you how much bounty you have, and the way you obtain bounty is by killing other players within a 200 to 300 level gap within yourself. Which means if you kill someone that has a level that's 400 less than your own, then you won't get anything, because then the game knows you're kind of just bullying on your players. Another thing worth mentioning is that you cannot actually do damage to anyone until you pass level 15, and the reason the devs added this to the game is to prevent people from spawn camping people that just started the game. You can also raise your bounty by defeating bosses, and once you reach a 20 million bounty, you actually stop gaining any bounty from killing bosses, so that's where most people cap off at. Because usually you're just trying to level up and reach max level, so you don't really have time for bounty hunting. And pirates are obviously more widely picked than the two teams, because pirates are just way cooler, and let's be honest, who wants to be a marine? Alright, there's two advantages that pirates actually have over marines, and the first one is that you can create a crew, and a lot of you might be wondering what a crew is. A crew in Bloxfoots is something that you can create once you reach level 300, and you can invite people to that crew, add a logo, assemble a crew, gather bounty, and reach the top 50th place on the leaderboard. And obviously you lose bounty if you die to bosses or players in combat, and the amount of bounty you lose depends on how powerful the boss or player that killed you was. And you can also buy some upgrades to hold a bunch of extra people, if you head over to the graveyard island there's an NPC that sells your crew slot for 2,000 fragments. And if you want to buy 15 extra member slots, which is the max, that will cost you a total of 30,000 fragments. Probably not something you want to be doing. And overall, that's just pretty much what crews do. If you reach the top 10 place, you get a special title called Pirate King, and that's something everybody wants. This also builds into one of the disadvantages of the pirate side. When you're a pirate, you're not allied with every other pirate. But when you're a marine, you're actually allied with every other marine. So it's kind of hard to fight against the marines when it comes to team fights. And you can't 100% trust your teammate. And obviously, if you are a pirate, ships are a little bit more expensive, and you just have to spend a bunch of extra cash every time you want to buy a ship. And obviously, if you got a bounty on yourself, it makes you more prone to bounty hunters, so you're gonna constantly have to keep on the run. Unless you're a total god at PvP, in which case you can just fend them off. Now I have some trivia for the pirate team. If a pirate equips the Vice Admiral's coat that you get from defeating the Vice Admiral boss at Marine Fortress, then the coat will actually change its logo from a Marine logo to a pirate logo. Because it doesn't make any sense if a pirate's literally wearing a Marine coat. Another thing is that once you reach a certain level of bounty, you'll actually earn titles for it, but this is only available in the second and third C. Overall, that's pretty much it for pirates, there's not much else you can do, but let's move on to marines. So moving on to marines, they're a little bit different and you'll find out why. Marines actually have a slight advantage when it comes to overall quality of life changes in the game. So marines boats are actually 50% cheaper and slightly faster than the other boats. And you also get a cool color to show that you are a marine. And obviously marines cannot attack fellow marines, so unlike pirates who can attack each other, marines can actually team up and gang up on pirates, which makes fighting pirates a little bit easier, even if your level is lower. And obviously you can collect bounties of pirates for a little bit of extra money, but most bounty hunters are actually in the third C and they just do it for fun once they've completed the game. Normally in Bloxfoots you want to be focusing on reaching max level, not on bounty hunting. 
Here's another fun fact that you might have not known. Marines can actually ally with pirates, but not through a crew or anything. You can just simply invite them to your party. You can kind of fight together, I guess. At least you can't do damage to each other, but overall, it's just a pretty weird update. But Marines' disadvantage is that they cannot create crews, which isn't really a disadvantage when you think about it, because they're already all on the same team, so it makes no sense for them to create crews. And also, Marines are rare, but this is probably the most dangerous disadvantage, because no one chooses Marines. Like, go into any block suit server right now, everyone what is a pirate? Marines are just not that cool, I guess. Okay, so this next trick I got here is actually probably one of the most useful tricks on this whole list. Well, it's to increase your bounty. Everyone that's in the second and third sea should already know what I'm talking about. There's a secret island located in this sea that a lot of first sea players do not know about, and this is the island which spawns the mob leader. You only have to go to this island when you're doing the quest to get to the second sea, so a lot of you definitely have not been here. But the trick comes into play when you kill this boss. After you kill him, you only have to wait for one minute for him to respawn. And why is this useful? Every time you kill this boss you get a plus 3,000 bounty and if you keep farming him that's 180,000 bounty in literally just one hour that is a crazy amount once you hit the max bounty for bosses which is 2 million bounty that's when you have to stop killing him but to get that instant 2 million bounty this is definitely the place you want to head to next trick we got here basically lets you see underneath the entire Blossfruits map and there's actually a bunch of glitches in game that let you do this but this one is pretty unique so all you have to do is equip the fruit that lets you go up and a very good fruit for this is the kilo fruit once you equip this fruit, all you have to do is go to a very, very high location on the map. You can choose this for yourself because there are a bunch of high locations, but I'm going to be doing it here. Once you do that, all you have to do is go into your settings and turn your graphics to the worst they can be, and make sure your graphics are not on automatic. You have to change them to manual. Once you set your graphics to low, all you have to do is simply activate the Kilo Fruits ability, and boom, once you fly high enough, you should be able to see what's underneath the Blocks Fruits map. And this might come as a surprise to some of you, but it's the Earth underneath there. That is crazy, which means we're actually not on Earth. Anyways, that's just a pretty cool trick to do and doesn't have much other practical use. But the next one definitely does, so make sure you stay tuned. Okay, so this next trick I got here is almost as useful as the first one. This basically lets you awaken a fruit by not completing the raid with that specific fruit. So you can basically complete the raid with the Buddha and unlock the Quake fruit. Huh? And the way you do this is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is select the raid like normal. And all you have to do is finish the raid like normal with your Buddha fruit. And then once you're on the very last island of the raid, I'm pretty sure that's the fifth island, you kill the boss and make sure you leave at least one of the NPCs alive. Make sure you do not kill the NPC that is very crucial towards this trick. Once you've done that, all you have to do is go into your inventory and equip the fruit. Then you just gotta eat that fruit and then finish off the last NPC that's on low HP with your fruit. You've awakened one of the abilities of the flame fruit or any other fruit that you choose. But this is a very useful trick and you can use this to awaken any fruit in the game. Alrighty, now I'm gonna be telling you about the fastest fruit in the whole of Blox Fruits. And some of you might be thinking that the fastest fruit is actually the awakened Doe's Donut. I'll tell you from personal experience, it is not the fastest fruit. And no, it's not the light fruit either. Because I'm like 100% sure that at least 90% of you guys were thinking about the life fruit. Sorry to break it to you guys, but it is not the fastest fruit in the game. Well, it's actually the portal fruit, because unlike the life fruit, instead of actually taking time to get to your location, you can zip from island to island with the portal fruit in literally zero seconds, because that's how long portal travel takes. It's instant. So if you want to zip from place to place, that's definitely the fruit you want to get. But if you're talking about actual flying abilities, then it's probably the life fruit. It's unbeatable in that.